I'm now all set, all prepared to invite the panelists who will be talking on the role of HR profession today. What has changed and where are we heading? Let me first invite our esteemed panelist, Mr. Akram Durrani, General Manager, Human Resources, Watin Telecom. Faria Salauddin, Head of Human Resources and OD Pakistan and Iran, GlaxoSmithKline Pakistan Limited. Kiran Khan, Manager HR and Admin 3M Pakistan. Brigadier Tamur Afzal Khan, Director Human Resources, Karshi Industries Private Limited. Faiz Etsayal, Managing Associate, ACE Consulting Group. And Anzeeb Abbas, CEO, Franklin Kavi Pakistan. Can you put, put your hands together for the panelists? I have an honor to introduce the moderator now, a very good friend of mine, Hassan bin Rizwan. Hassan bin Rizwan is a country consulting associate for Higher Labs, a Stanford University-based HR research and consulting firm. Higher Labs specializes in talent assessment solution and it's working with Monsters.com and Career Builders globally. Hassan is also an associate of Oktara and delivers training in Pakistan and UAE. Hassan actively maintains a blog at www.hassanrizwan. HassanRizwan.com on ideas, thoughts, and strategies related to talent management and organizational development. Hassan is also starting a radio talk show on Radio One FM 91 that will focus on the state of business in Pakistan and the corporate success stories. Please put your hands together for Hassan bin Rizwan. Thank you very much, Sohail. I have designed a certain structure that I'll explain to you in just a few minutes. Um, we will have someone with a microphone. Uh, one gentleman over here and Sohail, if you could help me with this, if you could be available on this side. So even during the discussion, if you have a question, please feel free to raise your hand. We will get your question. So the rules, these are the rules. And if uh, I would appreciate if all the panelists could also read the rules. Uh, so far, we've talked about the what to's during the downturn, what we need to do during the downturn, what HR professionals need to do when business is not happening. I think the last hour is very important for us to now shift our discussion from what to's to to how to's. So uh, I hold them accountable and responsible and you also hold them accountable and responsible. They have all the knowledge, all the expertise and uh, let's push them, let's get the knowledge out of them. We're going to push them to give us and tell us how to's. And uh, KISS, keep it short and simple. Uh, for any question, let's uh, try to stick to two minute rule. Uh, for audience, ask any questions you want at any time. The roadmap. So the role of HR today. What areas could HR focus on to either build its value or completely drop dead? These are the four areas that we will discuss. Poor communication, cutting back on T&D, famously known as T&D, training and development. Not stepping up, I'll explain what that means when we get to that. And knee jerks, I'll explain that when we get to that as well. So, poor communication. Can someone read it out, please? Poor communication leads to increased anxiety, leads to reduced enthusiasm, leads to negative behavior, leads to lower productivity, leads to decreased profitability. All right. So, the first question that I want to ask. Uh, and this is an open question. Any of my panelists can respond to this one. Uh, mostly we see that cost is measured in terms of rupees. When we're doing cost management strategies, the question is that cost is measured in today's terms. But when you are looking at this perspective, what you miss on is the lost opportunities from to for tomorrow. So this is a question that I have for uh, any of the panelists who wish to answer it. The microphones are in front of you. The question is, how do you ensure, again, how? How do you ensure that your top management has this understanding that whatever cutbacks, whatever slashes that they enforce today will have its effects and impact on opportunities, on productivity and profitability tomorrow? So do you get to, do you get to highlight this point to your top management or not? And if you do, how do you do that? Any volunteers? Anybody can answer this. Uh, generally, you see, we tend to see this recession as some kind of a monster which has fallen upon us from somewhere. I would say that it's almost become fashionable in the business world today to talk of recession because everything we do is in harmony and in some kind of uh, sympathy with what the Americans are doing. Since the Americans call this 
the biggest of all recessions. Therefore, we too must call it a recession. We as a nation have been used to crises all our lives and we have lived through one crisis after another. To us, it is just like uh, uh, Ghalib said, Ranj se khugar hua insaan to mit jata hai gham. Mushkile mujh pe padhi itni ke aasaan ho gai. To us, this is just another crisis that has come and it is not, it's been going on for the past nearly decade and a half. So number one, we must understand that this is not the monstrosity that we make it out to be. And here are opportunities even now wide open in front of us which can be utilized. And any company which has the vision and which also has the gusto and the enthusiasm and also the technological wherewithal can exploit this opportunity. I am right now consulting with a very small company which is at best medium size, which is growing phenomenally and the person at the helm of affairs may seem very stubborn to a lot of people, but he's taken the challenge to make this crunch period, so-called crunch period into an opportunity. And he says, let's plan for the long term. And he started planning for 2015, for 2020, and he has a whole set of products in front of him as to what he's going to launch. A couple of them have already been launched two, two years down the road. While other people are cutting on hiring, we are hiring more and more people. In the last about three months, we have hired 20 top executives and another lineup of about 10 executives is ready. So I think this world is for the brave and those who can grab the opportunity will benefit, not in the long, in the short term, but even in the long term. And I personally feel that this recession is no different from the crisis that we've been going through during Parvez Musharraf's time, when at best, with all the concocted figures, the reserves did not go beyond $12 billion. And uh, the fact that Karachi Stock Exchange did well for one particular year in 2002, that was made into something very huge. There are only 654 listed companies in Kar Karachi Stock Exchange. Mr. Which Mr. is a minister of the 3.2 million establishments that are there in Pakistan. Mr. Tamur, can we, can we have a little so, short time? So, here is an opportunity for the brave. Those who can take it will reap the benefit in the long term. Thank you very much for the response. Thank you very much. But uh, let's try to focus on the discussion that we've tried to structure so we can get more value from your thoughts. Now, is there anyone who would like to add? Freya, would you please? There is a microphone. Uh, your question was that how do we as HR professionals contribute to our uh, or do we get to contribute to our uh, business strategy saying that you know why if you cut down on TND or whatever and what are the repercussions. So that very question I just wanted to make a comment that CEOs don't make decisions in isolations and nor do we. So if it's a wise CEO, wise business leader will actually ask the HR professional and also HR professionals themselves, if you'd see your balance sheet, if you know you're the kind of industry you're in, you would make that decision jointly. It doesn't happen that CEO of one fine day say, you know, slash your budget. If it's a mature organization, it should not happen that way. That so if it is not a mature organization, do you have a medicine for that organization? Yes, Kiran. Just want to make a comment on that one because uh, uh, yes, for some organizations, maybe this recession is still not here. I mean, they still have uh, not faced redundancies or they're not forced to that situation. I would quote here a, a practical example or something which happened at 3M because we are a company uh, who is a global company.